Hello, my name is Boyan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software, and in this session we will demonstrate creating beautiful animations in your Delphi desktop and mobile applications. Animation Lab allows you to easily create beautiful timeline based animations with no code and very little effort. It can animate any property through open wire visual eye bindings. It can be used to animate visual and non-visual components. It contains a timeline component and a simple physics engine. It can animate both VCL and FireMonkey components as well as non-visual components such as database access components as example. Currently it works on Windows, Mac and Android. The timeline component can contain one or more animation channels. Each channel can be of different data type, real, integer, color, alpha color, string, boolean, date, time, and even event. Timeline channels can start and stop other timelines. The timeline channels themselves can contain multiple time periods. Each period can last different time interval. Each period can be of different type, linear, spline, sudden value change, etc. Each channel can control one or more properties. There are also channels that can generate events at specific time. To demonstrate this, I have created two Delphi projects. We'll start with the FireMonkey project. In this project, we have a viewport 3D where we'll have three-dimensional scene. We have a three-dimensional model. The model has round cube, sphere, and text. And we have one sphere in the viewport which is not part of the model. We also have added some lighting and we have few material sources used for the different elements in the scene. Now we'll add a timeline. We'll double click on the timeline and this will open the timeline editor. For this demonstration, we're gonna dock it. We'll add two real channels. One alpha color channel. For the real channel one, we'll add two linear periods. We'll set initial value for the channel to minus 10. Value for the first channel of 10. And ending value for the second channel to minus 10. Next, we'll select the model and we will add visual live binding for it. We will select the X position and we will set floating sync pin. We will switch to the open wire editor and we will connect the first channel with the X position. And we also will set the timeline to loop. And we'll run the application. We can see that the model is moving left and right. Next, we'll expand the two intervals 
to have 10 seconds interval. For channel 2, we will add a cubic spline. We will set the interval to 20 seconds. Then we will add 5 points to the spline. We'll put some interval and values for each point. Next, we'll add some more visual life bindings for our model. We'll add the Y position sync pin. And we'll connect the second channel with the Y position. Let's run the application. And you see that now our model is animated both on the X and Y axis. Next, we'll select the alpha channel, we'll add two linear periods, one cubic spline, and three value periods. We'll select the channel and we'll set initial color of red. For the first period, we'll select ending color of blue. For the third period, we'll set ending color of yellow. For the cubic spline, we'll add two points. We'll set the interval for the first one to 0 0.8 and we'll pick some color for it. Then we'll select the second one and we'll set some other color. We will also resize a little bit the linear channels so the animation will be more interesting. For the first value we will select any color of blue
we'll add one more value and for the second one we'll set a color of red for the next value we'll set color of yellow we'll add another value and we'll set some other color this should give us plenty of fun colors we can also resize some of those intervals to make it more interesting we'll select light material source 2 and we'll add visual light bindings to it for its ambient color we'll switch to the open wire editor and we'll connect the animation channel to the material source let's run the animation again now you can see that the color of the round cube is changing as specified by the channel to make it more interesting we'll add another timeline in this one we'll add only one real channel and we'll add two linear periods in it we'll set initial value for the channel to minus 10 value of the first channel to 10 and of the second channel to minus 10 next we'll select again the model and we'll add new visual line binding for it in this case we'll add a rotation angle over the y-axis and in the open wire editor we'll connect timeline 2 channel 0 to the Y rotation angle. We'll set the timeline to loop and we'll run the application. You can see that now as the model moves it rotates left and right. Now we will add a third timeline In this timeline we will add one real channel One alpha color channel One boolean channel And one string channel we will use this timeline to animate the text in the real channel we will add one cubic spline we will add some points to it and some values for their intervals and positions For the alpha 
channel will just add two linear periods. We'll set initial value of blue value for the first period red and will not change the third period for the boolean channel we'll set only one value we'll set its value to true and we'll make the interval very small so it is set almost immediately For the string, we'll set three value periods. We will make all of them relatively short. We'll set the channel value to be hey. The first period ending value of don't. Third period do. And for the last period that. We'll select the sphere. Add new visual life binding for it. The Y position. We'll select the like material tree. Add visual life binding for its ambient color. We'll select the text. Add visual live bindings for it. For its visible boolean sync pin and for its text sync pin. And we'll connect all that in the open wire editor. We'll disable the timeline. Select the round cube and add on click event on it. We'll select the timeline. And again with visual live bindings, we'll add binding for the start function. In the open wire editor, we'll connect the two and we'll run the animation. If I click on the round cube now, we execute the newly created animation for the head and the text. Now it's time to animate our last object. We'll add another timeline.
in it we had only one real channel with two linear intervals. We'll set channel initial value to 10. First interval to 8. And last interval to 10 again. We'll make each period interval to be shorter. We'll select the sphere and we'll add two visual life bindings for it. One for its Y position and one for its on click event. We'll select timeline 4 and we'll add new visual live binding for its start command. We'll set it to disabled, switch to the editor and connect the channel to the Y position and the start to don't click event. Next we'll select timeline 1 and we'll add event channel. We'll add three events and we'll put them each to happen at different time. In the open wire editor, we'll connect the start of timeline 4 to the newly added channel of timeline 1. This way, timeline 1 will also be able to start timeline 4. Let's run the application. If I click on this ball, animation will be performed and also every now and then the main timeline will start animation for it. You can see that we can start the animation timeline both ways. We already mentioned that animation lab also includes a simple physics engine which has some effects. The effects are drag and mass effects and they can be applied to a property controlled by a timeline. We'll demonstrate this with our project. We'll add a mass to the small sphere we just animated. We'll drop a mass component, switch to the open wire editor and we'll connect it between the animation channel and the property it animates. Let's run the application. And you can see that now the animation has mass and wobbles. This is how you can add additional effects to your animations. We already mentioned that Animation Lab can animate FireMonkey, VCL, as well as non-visual components such as client datasets. To demonstrate that I have created a very simple database project. 
I will also hook the list box into the database using Visual Live Binding. I will add new Visual Live Bindings for the categories Then I will add new Visual Live Binding for the list box and I will connect the two. If I run the application, you can see the list box is properly populated with the data. Now let's add timeline. We'll add two event channels and one integer channel. For the first event channel we'll add four events. One event for the second one. We'll make its interval longer. For the linear we'll add one linear period one cubic spline period, two value periods, and again one linear period. We'll set the value to 27 for the first linear period. For the cubic spline we'll add two points We'll set value of 3 for the first one and value of 7 for the second one. For the end of the first value period we set 8 and for the end of the second one 25. Then we'll rearrange a little bit the time to make it more interesting. We'll select our client data set and we'll add visual live bindings for it. Next and prior. We'll select the list box and we'll add new live binding for it. We'll switch to the open wire editor and we'll connect the first channel to next, second channel to prior and the third channel to the item index of the list box. We will set the timeline to loop, run the application and you can see that both the client dataset and the VCL control are animated and the client's data set next and prior functions are called exactly as events. So I can navigate to the database and still the events will be fired and moved to previous or next record. 
This demonstrates that we can both control VCL and FireMonkey components. We can animate almost anything. We can control timelines with timelines. We can apply effects and we can do very complex animations in very little time. This concludes our session. My name again is Boyan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software. You can see on the screen our website as well as my email. Mitov Software is specialized in very fast video, audio, digital signal processing, computer vision, artificial intelligence, parallel processing, industrial control and data acquisition. We offer a number of products. They include VideoLab, Video Processing Library, AudioLab, Audio Processing Library, SignalLab, Digital Signal Processing Library, VisionLab, Computer Vision Library, PlotLab, Data Visualization Library, InstrumentLab, Visual Instrumentation Library, Intelligence Lab, Artificial Intelligence Library, Logic Lab, Boolean Logic Library, Animation Lab, Universal Animation Library, Visual Live Binding, Universal Visual Live Binding Library, OpenWire Studio, a graphical development environment for non-software developers. We also provide the free MeToo Runtime Library for Delphi. In addition, we support a number of open source uh, libraries, including OpenWire and IGDI+. A number of our products are already ported uh, to support OS X and Android. We are working to expand that support across all the libraries and to cover the full range of platforms supported by Delphi. A number of the libraries also are expanded to utilize OpenCL for very fast GPU processing. Thank you for listening, and now it's time for questions and answers. Okay, I'm so used to doing things, you know, on the desktop when I use some similar types of things. Uh, well, it depends. Now I've got iPhone 6, which is more powerful, and some of these, you know, dual-core and quad-core tablets and smartphones are getting... Uh, are getting really powerful with uh, in, with GPUs plugged in as inside of them as well. So it's. Uh, I know you have all these other products and you you, you went through them quickly, but uh, I mean the categories. All I figure out is just about everything in the world that you would want to do with components, in C plus plus Builder or Delphi or Rad Studio. If it's in the audio category, video category, the signal processing category, vision, and then the other products, uh, this is all really good stuff. It gets really good uh, reviews and people use it. I'm just coming down. Oh, and I had to see Xena. It's been a while since I saw mm -hmm. If you don't know, uh, when Boyan was first demonstrating Video Lab, his favorite video clip was always Lucy Lawless, the, uh, the lead actor in the TV show Xena. Uh, warrior princess i guess was the uh the, he would always demo the video clip uh xena warrior princess with lucy lawless was the actor so uh if i don't see xena in a boy and Mitoff demo of their products then i usually get uh, something's missing somehow but that's just me and and adding a little smile to to the sessions here Thank you. Well, we tried to put it in Animation Lab, but we had some challenges uh, finding a way to put it in Animation Lab. Yeah, there's probably some rights management thing somewhere along the way as well. But, but again, Plot Lab. I love, I love Plot Lab. I, I really, you know, the things that you can do with, with signal processing, oscilloscopes, and all that stuff. It's just, it's just uh, spectacular. Well, Boyan, uh, anything else to add? Because there's there's no real other questions that have come in, unless uh, let's see, did I miss anything? That no, okay. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything else. We've got a few minutes of time with you. Sure, absolutely. Well, uh, all of the products are actually um, free for non-commercial purposes. Some of the visual components will have a small. Uh, 
label on them saying that it's a free version, but other than that, they're fully functional. And uh, as I mentioned, we also uh, maintain and uh, support a couple of open source libraries as well as we have started and it will be officially released in the next couple of weeks, uh, the new Meet of Runtime library, which is a quite new exciting uh, product and uh, we're making it free and available for everybody to use in Delphi and hopefully to empower the Delphi development and the Delphi community. And again, you can use them in the pro professional edition, right? They don't need enterprise architect or whatever. No, they you can use the lowest uh, possible edition. Can, can people actually hear me? I'm not sure because I don't have that feedback here. I'm hearing you and I'm watching the feed go out on a separate machine, so uh, it's all coming through. Yeah, I'm, I'm muting myself every once in a while only because it helps in case there's no uh, echo coming back sometimes, but uh, absolutely it's coming through. So I was just responding again to Timur while I muted myself. Okay, well, Boyan, it's great to have you as always. Uh, oh, yeah. And Charles is saying he can hear, and Charles says, hey, it looks pretty easy to use, uh, is his comment in the question area. Thank you. Well, we are trying our best, and we are constantly working to make it even easier. And uh, we'll talk to you. Uh, thank you, David. And we'll talk to you sometime soon, I hope, or, may or maybe see you uh, somewhere in California. I hope so. Thank you.